Well, hello again. It's uh, it's Friday again, rather than Saturday or Sunday. It's the 12th of July, the equivalent of the 12th of December in the UK. It is actually a little chilly today. It's about 14 degrees centigrade. So I've got the uh, got the fleecy, the fleecy overshirt thing, whatever it is. Now, uh, what's been happening this week? Not much, to be perfectly honest. There is a highlight, and that was uh, John Greenwald Jr. has released the Arrow report on the meta material. Well done, Mr. Greenwald. Um, there was a Stephen Greenstreet uh, basement office episode on cattle mutilations. That's worth a look, actually. <laughs> so there is a, there is a couple of things that are. That are, that are worth talking about uh, uh, talking about this week. Um, you'll notice there's no Land Cruiser in the background. That's uh, that's not because I've had to eat it. It's uh, Danny Sheehan still hasn't provided any tangible evidence that there's that we've got any recovered alien spacecraft, let alone any that actually are still operational. What you've got to bear in mind, of course, is that um, Gary Sheehan and uh, sorry, Danny Sheehan and uh, Ross Coulthard are lawyers. They are professional bullshitters. Lawyers are professional bullshitters. Now, a lawyer is someone that's gonna stand up in a courtroom and they're gonna say that my client uh, didn't kill all those police, police officers. He was test firing his machine gun and the bullets were already in flight when the police officers uh, ran into them. That's the sort of bullshit you get from lawyers. <laughs> so, I've said it before, personal opinion, put a line through anything Danny Sheehan or Ross Coulthard have to say. Um, <laughs> and if any lawyers use that defence, uh, I would like a cut of your fee, please. My client had already had test fired his machine gun, the bullets were in flight and the police officers ran into them. I should copyright that really, shouldn't I? Now, uh, Stephen Greenstreet did a, did a video on cattle mutilations. It was with Nick Pope. And uh, the bottom line is there's zero, zero evidence of ED, ET involvement. <laughs> zero evidence of ET involvement in cattle mutilations. And he got uh, <coughs> um, expert veterinarian pathologist has looked at the available evidence and said it's just normal stuff, normal predation and this, that and the other, you know, critters eating dead cattle. The cattle were probably killed by lightning. There is zero evidence of ET involvement. And if you think about it, flying saucer beams a cow up into it. Remember I said that there's like two saucers back to back flying saucers, not very much room in the middle of the part of it there for the crew, let alone beaming a cow into it. And if ETs were going to beam a cow on board so they could analyze it and remove parts of it, they wouldn't drop it back on earth. They'd fly away and do it, you know. <laughs> and then the, the cattle would be adrift in space forever, what was left of it. Apparently all these stories started after a horse mutilation Back in 1967, I think, a journalist ran with that, and it's it's like the UFO story, you know. The, the, the story spreads around person to person. They like it's a, they like the story. It's intriguing, <coughs> and it just gathers pace when really there's nothing to it. And you get people that will go and cut cows up and everything else for a laugh, because <laughs> so someone will find it and it'll be on the news. You know, it's uh, just just rubbish, really. So as far as uh, as far as the cattle mutilations go, take take a look at Stephen Greenstreet's video. I'll probably leave a link to it below. Um, but it becomes obvious very quickly there's nothing extraterrestrial related to cattle mutilations, regardless of what Linda Moulton Howe might tell you. <laughs> I've said it. I've said it before. Put a line through anything LMH has to say. It's just rubbish. Personal opinion. Um, actually, I, when I was working out in the bush, I would see uh, dead cattle around. 
and uh, you'd see these huge eagles. I mean, in, in Australia we have wedge-tail eagles, and these things are massive. When they take off, you can actually hear them. It goes womp, 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 womp as they, as they fly away. And I saw a couple of these wedge-tail eagles eating a, uh, a cattle carcass. I didn't disturb them because I didn't want to be carried away by the eagle. <laughs> <laughs> or one of the eagles but you can see how these nothing is wasted in nature you know as soon as a critter dies there's critters eating it I see dead kangaroos all the time where they've been hit by cars on the side of the road and the crows are eating them you know it's um there's nothing to it in cattle mutilations seems to happen a lot in america doesn't seem to happen anywhere else there's very few cases, I think, uh, in Australia, but that's probably, I think, the, the origin of these stories is pretty much one or two people. They probably just latched onto the American story, so uh, yeah, I'll put a line through that as well, cattle mutilations. The other thing too is if you don't get to the cow to examine it while it's reasonably fresh, they really smell bad. You know, After a few days, yeah, you don't want to get anywhere near anything like that. You'll you'll be tasting it and smelling it forever. Now, uh, oh yeah, apparently there was a cop in America. This is an example of the embellished stories that you get about cattle mutilations, fabricated and embellished stories. There was a cop in America who said that he found a mutilated cow in a tree canopy, up high up in a tree canopy. And when he was interviewed about that and he was actually questioned by an investigator, he admitted that he actually found the cow at the base of the tree. Now he was someone that had put in a number of reports about mutilated cattle, so as Stephen Greenstreet says, or somebody else said during that documentary anyway, you, know, you, you can't take any of his testimony seriously. If he's gonna embellish it like that, to make it sound intriguing, to make it sound like there's something going on, then you can't really take him seriously, can you? There's a big difference between finding a tree, finding a mutilated cow high up in a tree canopy, and finding it at the base of the tree. And they reckon it was probably just struck by lightning and animals were eating it. Simple as that, you know. But it's typical of the embellishment in the mutilated cattle um, industry. It's the same sort of thing that you find in the UFO ET industry. It's all embellished stories, fabricated stories. It's just rubbish, really. You know, the, the only difference is you do have some tangible evidence in that there's a dead cow there. No tangible evidence of ET involvement, of course. Um, So, Arrow, Arrow has released a report on the analysis of a piece of material claimed to be from the crash of an ET craft. Now this is a bit of metamaterial, I'm pretty sure the, the, uh, this is a part of the same material that, was, that Linda Moulton Howe had a long time ago. So this is the, the metamaterial so it's got a very dodgy provenance. I'll, I'll come to that in a minute. Um, I think they paid LMH, Linda Moulton Howe, $40,000 for a sample or something. It might have been the TTSA. Somebody paid a $40,000 for it anyway. The TTSA, Bigelow are involved, Hal Putoff is involved. You know, it's with that kind of provenance, you cannot take it seriously. You just can't. So. Anyway, you know, if it's put forward, why not analyse it? So, uh, I think LMH actually submitted this for analysis and she said she was going to publish the results. And when it came back that it was terrestrial material, she, she kept it all quiet. She didn't want you to know that it wasn't ET material. That's probably why she sold it for $40,000. Because <laughs> she knew it was a bit of industrial waste. Anyway. Uh, it's a layered bismuth magnesium material and it's most likely industrial waste from the Betterton Kroll lead purification process. I'll leave a link to the Betterton Kroll process below. 
what it does is what, the, what, what they do with the lead forms thin layers of magnesium and bismuth with, with, intermixed with lead on the on the surface and they scrape it off it's a way they purify lead um, Arrow apparently have said that uh, they think it may be uh, part of uh, experimental missile casing uh, from the 50s but I can't honestly imagine lead being used in anything that flies I mean can you imagine <laughs> They analysed this material and they found that it was almost equal parts lead and was it bismuth or magnesium? I'll get to that in a minute. Anyway, <laughs> you could, could you imagine flying around an aircraft made of 50% lead? Personally, I can't. I don't think spacecraft are going to be going to have any kind of lead in them. As I've said before, you know, an alien spacecraft is not going to have any metal in it, let alone any lead. <laughs> it's going to have to be as low. The mass is going to have to be as low as possible. That sort of excludes lead immediately, doesn't it? It's going to be made of super exotic, <coughs> low mass synthetic materials we can't even imagine at this stage. There's not going to be any metal in an alien spacecraft. So if something's got lead in it, you know, it's, it's, not, it's not going to be from any kind of flying machine, is it? Um, so I'll leave a link, I'll leave a couple of links to the Betterton Kroll lead purification process below and you can read it for yourself but that's where it's come from I'd say. And what they should do is get some samples from that process and compare it with these meta materials that they've got. Um, Gary Nolan apparently has some samples of the same stuff so remember, I don't know if I mentioned it but I, I, I was getting to that bit actually but these are in the wrong order as usual. <laughs> Gary Nolan's got some samples of this. It's, it's the same batch of samples, I think. And he said that uh, it crumbles easily, so it's not going to be part of a missile casing. It's not going to be part of an alien spacecraft either if it crumbles easily, is it? Um, uh, it's certainly, <clears throat> if it crumbles easily, um, you know, it's, it's not going to be robust enough a material to construct an alien spacecraft. Remember alien spacecraft stick out of the ground at a 45 degree angle when they crash. <laughs> They're robust enough to stick out of the ground at a 45 degree angle, but almost untouched, almost unscathed, you know, like an aircraft crash with debris everywhere. So they're not going to be made of a material that crumbles easily, are they? <laughs> now, uh... <laughs> Apparently this was <coughs> now it's claimed this material displays anti-gravity properties when exposed to terahertz waves. Big red flag. Terahertz waves is is far too broad uh, a, a, a term. You know your local FM radio station uh, radiates megahertz waves, but it doesn't say our local the local station I listen to here is Triple M on FM. They don't say, um, they don't say uh, this is triple M on megahertz waves. They say this is triple M on 92.9. 92.9 megahertz. So they're transmitting megahertz waves but they're specific enough to say they're on 92.9. Another local station I listen to here is on 107.3. They don't say they're Trans Heritage FM, local radio station. Everyone's going to be Googling that now to find out how, where I am. <laughs> but um, <laughs> it's, <clears throat> they don't say this is Heritage FM on a megahertz waves. They say it's Heritage FM 107.3. So that is a big red flag. They expose it to terahertz waves. It should be more specific. This specific frequency causes this material to do this. Arrow have examined it, they've presumably tried it with terahertz waves <laughs> and found that it has zero anti-gravity properties. The material is not pure enough to act as a waveguide. It could only act as a waveguide and they'd be extremely small wavelengths, probably talking about light wavelength, <coughs> if the bismuth was pure. But it isn't, it's got lead in it and magnesium, so it doesn't work as a waveguide. That's according to the Oak Ridge National Lab. Now they wouldn't make statements like this if they couldn't back it up. So presumably if Gary Nolan would like to see their results, 
exactly what they did, he'd be welcome to do that. I'd be very surprised if that wasn't the case. Um, now, so it's a, it's a, uh, Yeah, so it's a metallic specimen. Now remember what I've said in the past, you know, there's not, because there's magnesium in there, and, you know, no, there's not going to be any metals in an alien spacecraft. I think I just said it just now, you know, they're going to be synthetic low mass materials. There's not going to be any metal in an alien spacecraft. Makes no sense whatsoever. Um, they found lead in this sample when they were analysing it. It wasn't just bismuth and magnesium. They also found lead in this sample. No flying machine is going to have lead in it. Remember the Betterton Kroll lead purification process. The fact that this sample has lead in it, I think, strongly suggests industrial waste from the Betterton Kroll lead purification process. And if you're watching this, Gary Nolan or any of these people that analyse this stuff, just look it up, see if you can get a sample and compare it. Apparently they found nearly equal amounts of lead and bismuth. Okay, lead, bismuth, magnesium, so you know, it's less than a third probably, but it's still lead. So, the other thing you've got to bear in mind as well is, oh, and, and their analysis also showed that the material showed no interstellar signatures. So, materials flown through space are going to be subjected to all kinds of cosmic radiation. You know, you know gamma rays and X-rays and ultraviolet and infrared and all this sort of stuff. It showed no signs of being subjected to any kind of interstellar uh, signatures. There's no signatures of any of the sort of thing it would come across, it, it, it will be subjected to if you flew it through space. So it's not part of a spacecraft. Um, when you couple this with, it's got a very dodgy provenance as well, this stuff. It's, you know, Linda Moulton Howe, <laughs> claims six samples of these metamaterials from the Roswell crash, and we know the Roswell crash was a mogul balloon. And Mac Brazel, balsa wood stick, strips of rubber, a bit of cardboard, tin foil, scotch tape, that's what he found in his field three weeks before July the 7th. So the, the, story Glenn, uh, the story Glenn Dennis was telling about bo preserving bodies and all this on July the 7th, obviously nonsense, because any bodies would have been lying in the field for three weeks. No bodies because it was a mogul balloon. So anyway, these samples supposedly came from the Roswell crash. Okay. Uh, they were given to Art Bell of Coast to Coast AM back in 1996 by an army sergeant who claimed he got the samples from his grandfather, okay? So this is the sort of provenance this has got. So Linda Moulton Howe got this stuff and then gave it to Bigelow. Um, so I think Bigelow was a partner at some point as well in this, wasn't he? As a, a personal partner as well as a, well, I don't think he was a business partner as such. But, um, you know, Bigelow's NIDS or whatever it was called, we're talking about how put off, TTSA. Yeah, this is a seriously dodgy provenance um, with these people. This is all Skinwalker Ranch people. Um, dino beavers and people being followed home by demons, really, you know, get a grip, people. Um, so Linda Moulton Howe apparently said she was going to analyse a piece of this material and she was going to make it. She was going to make a big thing about about it being extraterrestrial. I think she got Travis Taylor to analyse it. Said said that it was 
terrestrial material. There was nothing to suggest it was extraterrestrial, and she hid the test results. But I think because uh, I think she then sold it to somebody for forty thousand dollars, probably because it wasn't extraterrestrial material. Um, and uh, it's been doing the rounds. So you know, as soon as you hear Bigelow and Hal put off TTSA, just put a line through any of it. It's it's going to be complete and utter rubbish. This is per personal opinion. Just 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 put a line through it. It's going to be complete and utter rubbish. Remember how put off psychic spy remote viewing believes in all this nonsense. It was a Scientologist. Um, I don't know if he still is actually, but remote viewing again. You know it's all complete and utter rubbish. Scientologists believe everyone has an inner thetan that's existed for trillions of years and has lived countless <laughs> lifetimes. Next caller, please. Uh, we as a species have only been around for about 350,000 years. <laughs> so what, what were we before? Perhaps we were all dino beavers. Maybe we were all dino beavers. And what else have I seen this week? Um, a woman claiming to be a star seed. Now, <laughs> oh dear me. This is uh, this is complete and utter rubbish, of course. Um, oh, I look completely human, you know. But we were seeded here. We're going to guide you. Yeah, you know, don't chop those trees down. Um, you know, something as original as that, you know. Watch the watch the pollution you're putting into the atmosphere. You've got to look after your planet. Complete and utter rubbish. <laughs> it's no, nobody is a star seed. Do you remember that uh, uh, Peter Paget saying, oh yeah, I'm 52% Pleiadian, when in fact he's 110% plebeian. You know, it's, it's all complete and utter rubbish. So this week, as like, like uh, just as last week and the week before that and the week before that and the week before that and the week before that, no first-hand witnesses have come forward, no tangible evidence has been produced to demonstrate, uh, to, 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 to prove that E.T. is visiting this planet. It's all complete and utter claptrap. Um, all right, well, I think, uh, I think that'll do. Um, as I say, there's not much to comment on this week. Um, the balloon, in, the balloon, the ETs coming here. Balloon is continuing to deflate. They can't keep it inflated. More and more people are saying this is a load of rubbish. I won't be holding my breath for these witnesses to come forward. You know, I won't be holding my breath to see any tangible evidence. Uh, things are hotting up a little bit with the JWST. They're finding that more and more interesting stuff. So we may get an announcement before too long that they found uh, a species out there, out in the galaxy. That's where it's going to come from. It's not going to come from these piffle peddling usual suspects. Um, <coughs> um, yeah, they've been finding uh, been finding more and more interesting stuff with the uh, with the JWST. So, you know, people say, well, we may be the first, you know, we may be the first intelligent species. That's why we're not finding anything. But what people don't take into account is the distances all the stars are apart. And I've said this before, you know, say, well, you know, we might be the first. Not necessarily. I mean, there might be a species because it's 25,800 light years. Just to the big, to, just to the centre of this Milky Way galaxy. You know, you could have a, you could have a species that, that doing what we're doing now, ten thousand years ago. And we, we wouldn't know about it for you know fifteen thousand years, another fifteen thousand years, fifteen thousand eight hundred years. Because the galaxy is so vast, the universe is so vast, you, you, a lot of people forget that they're looking across time as well as space. You know, when you're looking at starlight, you're looking at stars 40 light years away. The light you're looking at has taken 40 years to get here. If you're looking at the centre of the galaxy, that light has taken 25,800 years to get here. There's lots of stars between us and the centre of the galaxy. 
further and further and further away, further and further back in time, thousands of years back in time. And there could be lots and lots of species that are springing up between, between us and the centre of the galaxy. But we're not going to know about them for a thousand years. You know, if they're a thousand light years away, a thousand years. If they're 200 light years away, 200 years. You know. All the way back to the centre of the galaxy. When you're talking about 15, 20,000 years. You know, in 20,000 years' time, there might be loads and loads of signals coming from different species around the galaxy. It doesn't mean they're not there. It doesn't mean they're not there now. As I've said before, that doesn't mean I think they're coming here. I don't doubt that they're out there. They must be. Just with the number of stars and planets, they'd have to be out there. Although this planet does appear to be a bit rare. You know, a rocky planet in the habitable zone that actually spins. You know, some of them are in the habitable zone, but they're tidally locked. So one side of the planet is always bright and the other side is always dark. And if you had a species that would evolve on a planet like that, everyone's going to want to live on the bright side, aren't they? Or on the grey line, maybe, around the middle. So they might wipe each other out, fighting each other for the best, part, the best half of the planet. <laughs> there, are so many, there are so many variables in all this. But I think there, is, uh, there are exciting times to come. I think, uh, I think we're going to find out before too long if we are alone in the galaxy, uh, maybe even before Christmas. And uh, as I've said before, it's going to be from the uh, JWST and similar type scientific endeavours. It's not going to be because they're abducting Bubba the Lumberjack. Uh, taking all his clothes off and giving him a, uh, a, a, a Nikon or Canon enema. <laughs> Complete utter rubbish. <laughs> all right, well, that's it for this week, I think. Unless I see anything over the weekend that I think needs commenting on. I might even read that um, Arrow report and do another video commenting on the specifics of it. Uh, but yeah, I think you've heard all you need to know, really. Oak Ridge National Lab say it's not ET materials, consistent with terrestrial materials. Uh, it's got lead in it. Um, it shows no, no sign of being exposed to space travel. Well, cosmic rays would be bombarding it and doing things to it that would be revealed with the microscopic analysis. Okay, as always, if you struggle through the video all the way to this point, thank you very much indeed for watching. Maybe I'll catch you again. <laughs>